In this project, I'm using Next.js to take the privilege of dynamic routing and other useful features like router, links and that comes with Next.js. The dynamic routing will help us where users will be able to create their own link tree exactly after the domain URL followed by their user handle. For that we will use use router that comes within a next and we will use router query to get their handle. But that's for the later part. If you have just basic knowledge of React.js, you're good to go. And for the styling part, if you do not have a Tailwind CSS knowledge but you are familiar with CSS in general, I'll be explaining the Tailwind CSS classes along the way. So let's start implementing it. I have a directory. I can right click on and do open with code and it will simply open VS code. But if you haven't uh, set the settings while installing the VS code, there are a couple of other options too. You can go to the file path and write CMD and then do code dot and press enter. It will uh, open the VS code. But uh, that too comes with the settings. You have to enable it while installing. And another way is to open a new VS code window. Where is it? Open a window. And drag this one. Trust. And here we go. So let me open up my terminal. You can do this with control and back tick. To create the next chase project, you can follow this. It says npx create next app just like create react app although the react cra is dead almost so you can do npx create react app at the rate latest then if you want to use typescript use this flag I'm, i'll be using eslint so i will use this flag so never mind i have created a, a starter template with custom features like tailwind css google analytics page loader animation dynamic head component for seo responsive navbar, footer, font setup, eslint and others. I'll be explaining all of them in later part. So let's copy this URL and we will simply use this template. So in the terminal, let's create a directory. Uh, I will name the front end directory site. Uh, let's go to the directory cd site and let's clone this using the command git clone and paste the url make sure the url has dot git in the end as copied from the github repository and press enter it will start cloning the project so the cloning is done this template is using the stable version of next.js with no typescript no experimental app directory with linting on so that it's easy for beginners to debug. We will try on this template using npm run dev to start the project on. Okay, we have to do npm i, which will install the dependencies and create the node modules folder. It's installing, and then after that, we will run this. We will now do npm run dev. To run this project, make sure you have Node.js installed in your computer. You can check that out via terminal. I'll open a terminal and type node-v. It is showing me the version. So my computer already has Node installed and let's see npm version. Let's close the terminal and let's see the changes. The localhost is running on port 3000. This is the template. We will change the complete interface to this. Currently, this is a responsive website. You can see. Let's talk about the features of this template. Let's take a quick look at the features that I have implemented in the Links.js template and how you can take advantage of those. As you know, Tailwind is already configured in this template. Google Analytics is being used via next script tag which is inside this uh, app directory you can see this is the google analytics code you can change your tracking uh, url as well as the id this is using the script tag that comes within the next 
and let's take a look at this uh, page loader animation that takes place when switching to another path when we click on apply you can see there is a loader going on again uh, going to the home page and then coming back to the apply page for that loader animation we are using a library called end progress this is the npm package for end progress end progress is a javascript library that adds a loading progress bar to your website as you just saw in the script it is being used to show a progress bar when the user navigates between uh, other pages like this the script starts by implementing the use router hook we have imported this and this hook allows us to access the router object which we use to listen for events that indicate when user starts navigating to a page inside this use effect hook we have created two functions one is handle start and another is handle complete and we define three event handlers for the route change start route change complete and route change error events when the route change start occurs then it calls the function which sets the loading to true and do end progress dot start this is a function that end progress provides as you can see on the documentation and when the route change is completed then it calls the handle complete function which sets the loading to false and end progress to done and finally in the use effect hook we clean up these event handlers by removing them from the router object when the component is unmounted using the events dot off method in the return statement we render the nav bar let's take a look at this nav bar code this is the tailwind css nav bar nothing too complex we are using this set mobile menu options for toggling the menu and this is the function for toggling mobile menu i'm coming back to the app.js so we are rendering nav bar for all the pages and the toast container is to show a toast notification for user feedback. I thought of covering the Tailwind CSS basics in this tutorial, but we have to work on our backend. For backend, I could have used the Next.js API directory. Here it is, but for scalability purposes, I have chose to work with Node.js. For backend, we will create a directory on the same level as the frontend. I will name this server. and let's split the terminal and locate to the server directory cd dot dot for going back directory and then to server let's create an index.js file okay the linux commands don't work here so i have to work on this index.js and let's clear up the terminal clear extend this a bit and let's do npm init with the flag y this will init node without asking for packages details recurrently done let's also install the packages that we will be using in our project for that we use npm i or npm install and then the package names for server we will use express for database connection in mongodb we will use mongoose and for cross origin resource sharing we will use course for now let's install those so the node modules file as well as the package.json file is generated first create a git node and let's exclude the node modules from git that's for safety purposes before writing any basic code for our backend, let's take a look at the extension we will be using for this course. Let's come over to extensions and search here React ES snippets. I believe this is the plugin ES7 plus React slash Redux slash React Native snippets. So what this does, let's uh, let me show you a demo. Let's create a page called dashboard.js and write RAFCE. So upon writing on RAFCE, it gives us a suggestion react arrow function export component. 
when click on that or press enter it will automatically import this whole snippet so you don't actually have to write this whole thing manually it just uh, makes the work simple and for tailwind css you can use intellisense intellisense tailwind so this is the uh, tailwind css intellisense plugin so let me show you a demo on that h1 dashboard so when we add any class to this class name text white bg gray so it suggests some classes from this and then round it this will add some border radius uh, suggestions let's say i choose this border radius class so upon hovering on this you can see it will show the underneath implementation of that css class and what is the css for this we will cover more about tailwind css in the next part so let's see what is the browser extension we will be using for react it's called react Dev tools react developers tools and this is the extension that will help us with states and context and others i will click on add extension and the extension is added now let's go to a page and press f12 or click on inspect whatever and let's extend the chrome developer tools and give it a refresh you will see the components tab is here i will drag it there and now all my react components are visible and when we create any states in our react application or context everything will be visible here the state is false let me zoom in a bit you can see all the states and other context and everything will be visible and it will be very much easy to debug the whole application we have seen uh, what other extension we will use now let's create the basic backend let's do const express is equal to require express and let's create const app is equal to express app this will create an instance of express let's do app dot get on home path request dot response and this will send a demo response hello let's define a port const port is equal to process dot env dot port so when we are using any uh, hosting services the port is defined in their servers so we don't actually uh, manually define the port and if port is not defined then we can use alternative port which is 8080 we won't use port 3000 as that is being used in our front end you can see where it is the port 3000 is used in our front end so we don't have to use that and let's app dot listen to port and as a callback we are console logging this console dot log back take server running on port dash this port we can install another package for easy code editing that is called npm i node mon we'll install it as a dev dependency so we'll do dash dash save dash dev this will install this package as dev dependencies you can see these are the dependencies that we previously installed course express and mongoose and this is dev dependencies so while uh, deploying the code this dev dependencies will be ignored so let's uh, make a script the script will be named start so when we do npm start this code will be executed and the code will be nodemon and your main file name which is index.chase so let's do npm start you will see nodemon has started the main advantage of using nodemon is when we make any changes to the backend the server will automatically restart let's at least do uh, remove the semicolon and server will restart again let's see the response on localhost 8080 localhost 8080 it is saying a response hello or we can also do this 
service listening on port flash back tick and back tick you can see upon changing this the server is already restarted and let's refresh the server is running on port 880 so this is the basic setup for our front end as well as our back end and we will continue the rest of the tutorial in the next part